Jet in Tal, Jet in Sekunde, Trailfest, Udin, ins Dafin, Ecke Dein, Leben, Wer hat ihn gedacht? Run, Löchle, Rund. Money? Help me, Lola. Help me, Lola. <laughs> Welcome back to the 20 year old movie podcast, everyone. I am Matt Anderson, joined by my fabulous co host. At six foot three, <laughs> 225 pounds, from the University of Southern California, at Power Forward, the Motor City Motor Mouth, <laughs> Polish Moses. He's a he's a movie buff because he's always covered in a film of Greece. The Roger Ebert of using your lower jaw. <laughs> Joel, sweet baby Jay. <laughs> Vukovsky. There he is. Right there, everybody. Damn. Welcome back. I feel like I'm going to die, but I summon all my strength for a good intro my to the show. My bi-coastal baby. What you know. My bi-coastal baby. Yeah, it's seven o'clock. Wait, <laughs> before you keep going, um, I've heard you do that intro before saying six foot four. <laughs> Did you shrink in the last week? No, I'm, I've always been six foot three. Oh, okay. If any of the listeners can find a tape of me saying I'm six foot four... I'm a goddamn, you know what, <laughs> I'm a thief, I'm not a liar. All right, fair enough, fair enough. Um, you know, okay, so like this week we're watching Run, Little Run, but before we get into it, I want to hear about how your week's been, like you've been uh, over killing it. Um, this week has been very non-eventful, but before that I was killing it, comedy was going great. Yeah. I had be, I had great, you know what, I, I promise, I, years ago I told my mom I would when she asked me, what age am I going to be old? And I told her, Mom, you're going to be old when you're 65. And well, this year, August 7th, she turned 65, and I got a flight to spend her birthday with her. I booked a few That's one-nighters so, yeah. so I could, like, you know, pay for the the, the flight, you know. Mm -hmm. Doing comedy, doing longer sets, shredding in the D. Nice. Like... Wait, how long are these sets? 25, 30? I predicted like 25 or something. That's great. Yeah. It's a good show. It's about, you know, that's like all fastballs. It's pretty tight. They didn't like my jokes about Flint, Michigan, <laughs> but fuck them. Sensitive <laughs> PC auto workers. <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> you know, auto workers. Yeah. They, are, they always have those Over safe spaces. spaces. You know? Uh, I don't want to be covered in molten steel because yeah. I have a family. <laughs> I need a safe space. Yeah. I don't like electric cars because they're coming for my job. Um, the, there was like a Just really kidding. funny uh, like prank among auto workers in Detroit in the late 70s, early 80s. Yeah, let's hear it. I feel like this is going to be good. Well, you know, Toyota and Honda, they were starting to like come to the <laughs> the US it's the fun marketplace. Prank. It's the fun prank and the brakes took, don't work. They no, they took a lot of um they took a lot of the market share from Ford and to get back at them is uh -huh. like just a bit of a goof. A lot of auto workers just started killing any Asian guy. Oh <laughs> classic bit. <laughs> yeah. So fun. Uh, that, that, that's my new character. Um, wow. Person who thinks Band of Brothers is actually the fourth jackass movie. Jesus Christ. I, to, to, to take it out, to take out your anger at like Honda, <laughs> at just a random Asian guy. That's like. You take one of our jobs, we take one of your people. <laughs> Plain and simple. We, you, you ain't, you're not coming for our auto market share. And it is funny to see, like, you know, capitalism boiled down to the human scale. Like, imagine a dairy farmer just kicking the shit out of an almond farmer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because, uh, you know, milk is actually weird to drink for adults. Yeah, like a dairy farmer sees oat milk, like, being sold in the grocery store. Then he, like, curb stumps the Quaker Oats yeah, guy. Yeah, he, 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 like, he's like, don't be coming in on my milk game. It would be convenient, because if you got curb stumped, like, oatmeal is one of the few f foods you could eat. I feel like, uh, <laughs> right, uh, but I feel like uh, a farmer would, like, fence stomp you. It'd be Thanks like like a nice you. little wooden. We gotta drive twenty <laughs> minutes to town. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little a rock garden stomp. But um, yeah, you like that would be a good movie. Like a 
a farmer loves American history X <laughs> and he wants to curb stomp someone for stealing pumpkins. <laughs> and then he drives around and they're like, they're looking for a curb because it's very rural. <laughs> yeah. And then just over the course of the movie, they become good they friends. They become great friends. Yeah. And they uh, start a pumpkin farm. And that sounds like a great movie. Um, but anyway, tell me, uh, tell me a little bit about shredding in LA. You, um, I know you did oh, some I'm roast not, battling. I'm, dude, I'm not even done. I haven't even left the city yet. So I, right. I, I You're get still to, in with dude, your mom's birthday. Oh, fuck. Man, I forgot to do that. Damn it. I got to call in uh, bitch to my credit card company. What happened? Uh, cause Spirit Airlines, I got to the, the airport for right. my flight. You had to drive. Right. I got, I got to the airport for my flight, and then um, it was canceled. And Spirit Airlines had no one working. Right. And we got a little bit of this last uh, two weeks ago. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. We did a little bit on the road. And so then I went like to four different spots looking for a rental car. No one, no one um, would give me a rental car. I even offered one place a thousand dollars for a rental car. They just told you to go fuck yourself. Yeah, they were like, no, sorry, I can't do it. Your money is no good here. And then finally, I told some guy, like, like, yo, I promised my mom I'd spend her birthday with her, and he's like, I got you. And I got the last rental car in New York City. Right. White F-350. Can I tell you that story sounds, like, made up, and I would, like, be like, fucking hold this car from this liar. (laughs) His mom's birthday, her 65th birthday, it's a little too specific. I I would not believe I told her she would be old at the age of 65. (laughs) You sound like a psychopath making up, like, just a confident, bold story at the, at the, uh, I gotta pick up the Prince prince of Nigeria. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) He's giving me a wire (laughs) for six million dollars. Right. Exactly. We're gonna save this orphanage. (laughs) But you made it. You got your good shows in. How was your mom's birthday? Uh, it was great. Um, we did a lot of acid together, <laughs> and then she held me in my arm, in her arms, and uh-huh. I stared at the stars. That's got to be a trip for to take it acid was. and then hold a, a thing that came out of you. Well, she didn't take acid. I, I, she asked. She told me she'd do mushrooms with me, and I brought acid instead. And she's like, "No, I'm not doing acid." Mm. Like she was such a prude about it. I feel like I'm with your mom on this one. I'd do mushrooms, but I wouldn't do acid. All right, you should have some mushrooms right now. There, there's some in the other room. I have to drive, but that's, that's I'll, fine. I'll drive take, slow, homie. I'll, <laughs> I'll take them at home if you. I mean, that sounds not fun though, and it's like your mushrooms. Yeah, but what? what you, like you do mushrooms, and then Shelby would make you like try on she's, different shirts. <laughs> no, she's like it would be like I would be at home by myself. For the first time, because she's going to a slumber party oh, tonight. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, like this weird Brooklyn thing, <laughs> whatever. Uh, so she's like gonna be gone all night. So it'd be like the house to myself for the first time in a long time, but like on drugs. So I'd probably start like getting sad. I'd probably have like a really cathartic um, night filled with like just video games and movies and. Oh, dude! I went candy. to the, I went. Oh. <laughs> And then, you know what I, I did this week, actually, that was pretty yeah. interesting? What? I went to the VR. There's a VR arcade in Bushwick. Oh, my God. And it's, it, is, <laughs> it is next to a medical testing facility. They share a storefront. Oh so it's God. like the most Black Mirror shit you've ever seen in your I life. I love it. Oh, my God. There's a mall that I went to uh, over in the east. It's like a kidney dialysis place what next mean, what to a mean? laser bounce, like a children's <laughs> like a recreational. It's called Laser Bounce. It's right next to the kidney dialysis. What do you mean by back in the east? Like China? <laughs> no. It's just like a 30-minute drive east of us in Queens. I, I forget the name of the mall. Okay. It's uh, it's like the same thing, though. It's like the most sad shit right next to like the happiest place on earth. It'd be like if we put like our internment camps right next to Disneyland. Or Six Flags. Yeah. Like the roller coasters could be like, cars could be old train cars. Ooh, yeah. We'd hear a lot less complaints about gassing all those Jews. They rode a train. They rode like Do a think, roller coaster. Okay. I know the Holocaust, like given uh, all the arguments, it's safe to say it was probably a bad thing. Right. Um, What percentage... Better would it have been if they got to go to Auschwitz on a roller coaster. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. It would be like people would be screaming, but they would be like screaming for a fun reason this time. <laughs> Imagine like a little kid who's like, I am tall enough to ride. They're like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no. 
<laughs> All right, let's move on from this fun Holocaust rift. Um, uh, we are uh, celebrating German cinema today with the film Run, Lola, Run by Tom <laughs> Twiker. <laughs> Uh, I want to move on and talk about the movie, but I still want to get how, how this the is a very German went. film. <laughs> it is segmented, it is organized, and it is filled with wonderful electronic music. <laughs> you know, in this film, it has a pulse from beginning to end. This is 80 minutes of hot, stopping, sauerkraut munching action. <laughs> <laughs> this is good. Yeah. I spent time in Deutschland und hören noch. This is that's a really good accent. I I no, my sister li lived in Germany for a long time, so I've been over there a few times. <laughs> You've been practicing your yeah. racist accent <laughs> for when she comes home. <laughs> it, it was weird. Like first time I went over there was like Christmas dinner, and like she was she was an exchange student. Yeah, and I was asking her host family. Just nothing we weren't talking about. So I was like, hey, are you guys ashamed of that whole Holocaust thing? Oh, God. And like, I, they didn't answer. Mm -hmm. So I just thought like, oh, they're not ashamed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the way you read it. They are. in. My parents are like, no, don't do that. Don't ask that's about That's so brash. That's like going to Harvey Weinstein's house and being mm -hmm. like, so you did it, right? You did it. It's like everybody knows what happened. And you just go out and just, I guess, I Isn't guess it's Harvey a little Weinstein different though, kind because of a, kind these of people didn't actually commit for that. the Holocaust. Um, I mean, he's the type of guy that might, I guess it's different. It is different. Like Harvey Weinstein actually did it. These people are just ancestors of, you know, yeah, we should, we should probably blurp that one out. Who cares? Listen. <laughs> All right. Well, if you do have an answer, it, <laughs> I don't even know what the question is. I, I still want to know about your trip. <laughs> like, tell me about the roast battles. The roast battles were great. I went against the wonderful Keith Carey. I was motivated because I keep getting snubbed for that fucking TV show. Right. If you guys get, you know, I'm, I, I love roast battle, but I've got nowhere left to do it now. Like, I don't think I can do comedy fight club, which is taking over for roast masters at the stand. Yeah. Roast masters was very good to me. I love it. I love that competition. So I booked one in LA, went out there, did the main event, at the comedy store and it went, couldn't have gone better. Right. And was, you know, you could go back there in like a couple of months anyway. And they'd be like, yeah. Yeah. I'm probably going to go back in November and December. Like I'm going to try and like, I really liked the comedy store. It was really cool. They treated me well. Yeah. Like, yeah, I got offered like regular spots that night, which like, yeah, you're, you're the Stan never did that. You're shit. a hot, you're a hot girl though, Joel. You're an out of towner. You should know this. You know, you go out of town, you're hot shit. You, you know, so like you're in L.A. You're you're only gonna be there for a little bit. Let's get this guy up. That's true. Like all the L.A. shows went great, but I am a little disappointed in my performance in the L.A. pickup basketball games. Oh no. You know, the first one, I was just very excited to be back. Yeah. And, like, all my shots were off by, like, two feet. Okay. And, like, this guy who invited me to play, he just wanted to show off, like, how good he'd gotten. He lost 50 <laughs> pounds. He was all, he's <laughs> dunking in games. And, like, oh, my yeah. fat Polish ass is just coming back from knee surgery, waddling right. around like a toddler. Yeah. And that's, like, me asking you to play Fortnite with me just to, like, feel good about myself. <laughs> yeah. Or it's, like, me asking you to have a conversation with eye contact just to feel good about myself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, guys, if you were here, you'd see me looking into my computer right now. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, no, yeah, being friends with Matt good. is like he'll do. He's very loyal. He's a good guy. But every month you got to spend a half hour <laughs> listening to him talk about some new piece of technology he buys. <laughs> That'll fix it. I feel like technology is fixed. Every time I really want to watch something, I'm like, I've got a beautiful TV. I've got mm -hmm. a 55-inch smart TV. I've got Verizon <laughs> Files. I've got a PS4, mm -hmm. Amazon Fire Stick. And you have you probably had trouble getting your hands on this movie, didn't you? <laughs> no, no. Every time I, I, I'm watching something like I whatever, eh, works fine. Every time I really want to watch something like Hard Knocks, Better Call Saul, it never works. It's always buggy as shit. <laughs> and I don't see a solution to it. I don't know. Maybe you need, uh, need to upgrade that internet or something, you know? No, I have Fios. I don't know, dude. I might need a little, a little bit more range, but whatever. 
Okay. But then, okay, L.A. shows were great. I mm-hmm. was there for my girlfriend and her family. That went very well. And uh, she was in a wedding. I met some people. Uh, she could have been a, a slightly time. better wedding date, but I won't fault her for it. <laughs> What's that mean? She didn't take any of my... Well, you know, I, I people don't suspect, expect this from me, but I actually love to dance. And oh, okay. she didn't dance with me as much as I like. Mm. I spent the whole day hanging out with her parents. They're sweet people. But Can like, I tell you something about myself? I... I'm like nervous at weddings because like I want to dance, but it comes out like very much like bad white guy dancing. It doesn't matter. As long as you're passionate about anything in this world, it's worth doing. God. And dancing's exact. I was dancing so true, last Joel. night, so actually. true, yeah. I went and I saw some Detroit techno. I saw Carl Craig. Yeah. And it's like night. It's, it's like the first techno music. And it sounded so much like the score of Run Lola Run. Oh yeah. So which okay, so like let's but, get into the, to the film movie of the week. Of the Let week. us set the yeah. stage. So, um um how did you watch it? I uh, I I went ahead and downloaded uh Shutter on uh, Amazon like the free 7-day trial and then I canceled it immediately. So I watched it um for free on Amazon. Well, I'd seen this movie before. This was one of the first like artsy films I'd seen. So oh, really? This, yeah, this movie made an impression on me when I was a young man. I loved it. This was my first time seeing it. I didn't realize it. I think I'd saw like up to like the first animation, and then I had to pull away because like I I was familiar with it. I knew it was good. Uh, I knew she ran. <laughs> yeah, and then this was a movie like in the year 1998, just to set the stage, mm-hmm. like cinema had yet to evolve to its curtain state because like now auteurs are everywhere. They're on every channel of television and like there's probably like 20 to 30 things each week you can watch with a real clear artistic voice. That wasn't the case in 1998. Right. Keep in mind, network still had a lot of power. John Benet Ramsey was still dead, <laughs> and it was just a different process. So uh, there was this little German art house. I love movie. how you slip it in. It's like yeah, I feel I, it feels good when you slip it in. Yeah, slipping in a John Benet, just like mm-hmm. her father. Hey, uh, oh, all right. So uh, this is a uh, but like mid nineties, like that's kind of when indie cinema really yeah. started to rise up because independent cinema in America was great in the nineteen seventies. During the eighties. After, like, Jaws and the kind of Spielberg and Star Wars influence, movies became much more of a business and much less of an artistic endeavor. Now, how do you say the director's name here? Tom Tyker? Tom Twyker. Tom Twyker. Uh, so he directed it, um, and I read somewhere, like, he... He was like he was the founding member of his production company. So this vision of this uh, this movie was like uninhibited by any like form of red tape. Like this was like his full realized project. And like I feel like there's so many artistic uh, like deviations from what you'd normally see, where it's like like you'd get notes back from a studio that'd be like, oh, we can't include these snapshots of this weird side story of this woman. But it's like, as the artist, you you could tell like he was really into cause and effect. Yeah, no, okay, just to go back into plot right. synopsis, like the okay. stage is set. Th- this woman, Lola, she's got fiery red hair is like just kind of a visual signature. I yeah. guess it was kind of involved. Like she couldn't wash her hair the entire production. Mm-hmm. That's why she kind of looks like at the end, you can like see it a little bit. Like her hair, a little bit of like a rust of it. Like a she looks like someone set Adam Duritz on fire. <laughs> <laughs> Which honestly, I I I can't blame you for that. And think about how much she's running and sweating and not showering and rinsing out her hair. That would be the grossest hair in the world. So she gets a call. Her boyfriend, this kind of like low-level drug dealer, I yep. believe. Manny. Yeah, um, Manny. He panicked on the train, and he left his distribution money behind, and he couldn't get back on it. Like, for whatever reason, the cops stopped him from re-entering yeah. the train, which... And then, so it's low He looks shady, I guess, you know? And, yeah. But it, but it was told through flashback sequences in black and white. But the stage is set where mm-hmm. Lola has 20 minutes... To give Manny a hundred thousand whatever currency yep. DMs. 
And like, <laughs> Deutschmax. Uh, 100,000 DMs. Slide, in, slide into those DMs. <laughs> 100,000 of them. Sorry, keep going. Yeah, um, yeah so it, it's set up where she need, she has so many different ways to save him. And you just see the same like situation of her running to try and come up with the money play out three different times. Yep. And all these different outcomes. And like you see a lot of different mo- movies in this. Like you definitely see. Yeah. Um, like I, was, I wrote uh, in here like all sorts of th- movies that you see influenced from this. But this movie originated from uh, the director did a short film uh, in 1990 called Because. And I guess like I told you earlier off mic, but like he would record fights with his girlfriend. And like that would lead to real life. Uh, real life. uh situations in his films and i believe that that was because it was like a couple fighting with three different outcomes it'd be funny if like chuck berry was like yeah i'm, I'm making a film about ladies going to the toilet <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's just three I'm different recording women. for research <laughs> I want to make sure it's uh got a lot of artistic yeah. integrity you know <laughs> Yeah, at what point uh, does perving out uh, <laughs> stop being pervy and start becoming art? It is like it is kind of fun to compare any film to Chuck Berry. Yeah, G- continue that thought. <laughs> That's it. I mean, just try it. Like, better than uh, better than that P video. <laughs> Like it, all his films, honestly, they have the same plot as Jaws. <laughs> did Did you see the Meg yet? Uh, no, that's with the monster shark, right? Who Who's in that? The Meg. <laughs> Who else? Um, Jason Statham. Oh, and Rain Wilson. Okay, and I, one of those. Um, we gonna need to hot, fight the shark. <laughs> hot, scary looking women. Mm, like a Michelle Rodriguez. Yeah, yeah, like a 2018 Michelle Rodriguez. <laughs> Did you hear the way I said Michelle Rodriguez? <laughs> Michelle Rodriguez. It's a fun uh, name. She to have was a in list SWAT. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle Rodriguez, my favorite actress. Um, all right, so <laughs> we're talking about Run Lola Run. Um. And this movie, like, it is, it did make a big impact at the American cinema. Like, this is, like, one of the first European movies that really crossed over with young people. Like, yeah, I think Train Spotting was maybe a little bit before this. Mm-hmm. So that opened the doors, and then Run Lola Run was the next one. Right, nominated for a BAFTA for uh, a non-English speaking film. So... I mean that's that's a huge honor and so it's a great movie and it's innovative. It's also like this is maybe the most 1998 movie we've seen. Yeah, it makes its way into the American zeitgeist for sure. It was parodied by The Simpsons. Uh, you know, like Shaun of the Dead uh, paid a lot of uh, homage to it, as well as uh, The Born Identity that was uh, actually taken inspiration from them. And like in this movie, I saw a lot of Pulp Fiction. Yeah. Um, you definitely see like that that device that kind of like Amelie made its name off of of you see every character's like life. Like that was lifted like almost directly from Run Lola Run. Yeah. It's it's like you know when they do the credits at the beginning and you saw all those people? I was like, what the fuck is gonna happen in this movie? You know, because it's like this is so many side characters, but they they developed each character so well. Where it's like, I could say like, oh, there's the uh, there's the bank guard. He has like a whole character arc. Her 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 father, whole character arc. Her mother, whole character arc. It's like all these people. You get to see it play out three different times. Where it's like they do a little bit differently each time, but it like develops their character. Where you're like, oh, I understand who these people are more and more. Like her dad. Oh my god. Yeah, and it's all it's it's subtly built and executed like the way the secondary characters are written. Like honestly, like you can tell how good a movie is by how the secondary characters are. Yeah, and like sure, this the aesthetics a little dated. The music in this in this film <laughs> yeah. is if you don't very like techno, bad. it's hard to get on board. Like I was watching this on my MacBook with Shelby, like watching kind of over my shoulder, interested. You know, it's a good movie. 
But it was just like dun 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 and she's just like, Could you fucking put in headphones, please? Like yeah, this if, is if if you were to watch <laughs> pick one movie to take <laughs> ecstasy during Run Lola Run would be the first pick. Oh by yeah. By a mile. But because of the short uh runtime at the very least. Yeah, then you can go um you'll have plenty of time to make strangers touch your hair. <laughs> <laughs> right? So that's good for everybody. Yeah, everything win win win. Um like uh and this is it this did like this movie made waves and the music was very like revered at the time and Tom Twyker like the rest of his career kind of was more music based. Yeah, he like, he composed the music as well in this movie. So he did he basically he directed, wrote I think he wrote, yeah, he wrote, directed, and uh, composed the music for this movie. The only thing he didn't do was produce, um, which is like insane to think about. You know, he's in his thirties; he's in the prime of his life, and this is like the art. Like, you know, you make your best art in your thirties. Like, the the oh shit, really? Yeah. Does that mean this is the best we're gonna do? No, he was thirty three when he made this because oh, he's I got, uh, I got a year and a half. He's fifty three right now, um, and like you know, he goes on to make some other stuff, like uh, the stuff that I recognize as he co directed uh, Cloud Atlas with the Ch- Wachowskis. Um, he did the first season of Sense Eight. Did you like that that Netflix show Sense Eight? I uh, the one about the karate teacher. It's uh. <laughs> It's like all these people are connected. <laughs> God damn it. Um, that's right, Joel. <laughs> Have you seen it or no? <laughs> For our sense eight heads no, out there. Um, never seen it. I, I don't I don't watch anything. It's a. Uh, I watch the movies. You can for watch billions and then I, you, watch I billions force you to watch and these I watch old Succession. Movies. Yeah. Dude, this this Netflix shows it's not half bad. It's like this these special people like are all connected like through retards. <laughs> you might, to some you might say, yeah. So like they all have this special connection where they can tap into each other's skills and like hang out with each other. But it's like it's like a guy in Asia and it's like a it's like a gay guy in in Latin America and it's like so like but there's like an evil corporation hunting them all. So they all need to use each other's skills. To help each other survive, and like they slowly figure out they have this connection. Um, I don't know; it's it's kind of a fun. Tom Hanks plays kitschy. like every different role, right? <laughs> Tom Hanks in Sense Eight. Oh, no. sorry, I thought you meant Cloud Atlas. No, I was describing Sense Eight. Cloud Atlas. I, I haven't seen that. Fucking What's movie. Cloud Atlas about? That's Tom. Yeah, it's Tom Hanks and an Asian lady for four hours or something. How? Well, what's the runtime on Cloud Atlas? Uh, it's got to be like a billion years. That's all I know. Um, it is. hundred and seventy one minutes. Do you ever make a noise when you search, folks? <laughs> well, I do the Ferris Bueller song. I, I remember. <laughs> I remember I went to like church camp, and like the the guy in charge of me is like, "Yeah, I had the best day with my family. It was my birthday. I had my wife, my sons. Oh no! And um, I just thought everything was perfect. And all I could think about was this song about how good things were. Oh yeah." Boom, boom. <laughs> um, yeah, I uh, not a but not especially on topic there. Were we? <laughs> no, dude. When uh, do you have you ever noticed like when you like call like a like a place and you're like a customer service and they need to look up something, they're like, oh, um, I'm sorry, Mister Wachowski. Let me just check on that for you. And they're like doing. They're doing a little oh, work. Yeah, um, They're doing a little work, and and then they make this noise. They're like, you let let me look that up for you. All right, uh, I did find your file here, and it says you're completely gay. Whoa! <laughs> oh, take that! <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> oh shit, we fucked up. This is gonna be an ASMR podcast. 
What did we fuck up on? Man, this movie was released in the USA in 1999. No, but that doesn't... No, no, this is like... Okay. You t- you, I'm glad you said something, Joel. Uh, because this movie uh, was released in 1998 in uh, on August 20th. Uh, it's called Germany. You got it? It was a German film. And because we didn't Lola get it until Rint. 1999 doesn't mean that it should be next year's film. Okay, so we're, we're off the German calendar. <laughs> yeah, the Deutsch Deutsch calendar. Okay, this film was released in 1998, and it's uh, time for a pretzel. <laughs> um, I liked. Uh, I mean, this is a little stupid and like a little autistic, but like I love how like he needs a hundred thousand Deutschmarks because uh, you know it's like the euro is coming out this year. Yeah, I, I actually heckled it in my own home. You're like, it's the Euro. The Deutschmark's not even real. <laughs> yeah, do you think, um, I wish they had a young Dirk Nowitzki cameo in this, you know? <laughs> like him just, bo- she runs past so the boarding a plane. The fade away swish <laughs> on some fucking German basketball they court. They, and they did have a saw. <laughs> yeah. Like the foresight of this movie. <laughs> They should have gone and like remastered it like Star Wars and added him in. <laughs> yes, yeah, so we've gone back and we've fixed some scenes. <laughs> yes, yeah, she runs past the playground. There he is, <laughs> the big mummy. Okay, so uh, uh, I know we've already talked about it a little bit, but Joel, I'm going to make you do the one minute synopsis because we haven't gotten the entire story yet. We don't know what happens. Uh, spoiler alerts coming, folks. It's 20 years old. Um, Joel, are you ready to do the one minute synopsis? Here is the one minute synopsis for Lola Rent. In three, two, one, go. In this, it's a it's a really a collage of formalist elements. You start seeing a group of people, the camera goes up in a crane shot, and you see the title spelled out, accompanied by a terribly CGI'd soccer ball. <laughs> All you know is that the ball is round. <laughs> And the, the game is 90 minutes, which is like a great saying to start an 80 minute movie. But like in these three situations, you have Lola running to save her boyfriend. First time she tries to um, get the money from her father. She fails. And then she catches Manny robbing the store and she breaks him out and she dies. And in the next situation, she is a little bit late. And then he she gets there and he gets hit by a car. And then she has a hundred dollars, and she goes to the casino for some reason. No, that's that's the third run. Yeah, that is. I'm on the third run. Oh, you're on the third Each run. Each of them die, and then she makes. No, mon- he he dies in the second run. She lives. Yeah, but she dies in the first time. In the first run. Right. Yeah, that's what I exactly what I said. Okay, I'm sorry, Matt. Oh God, we're coming up on our minute. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, I, I, that was such an accusatory tone. Matt. <laughs> Matt. <laughs> How dare I you? I was right. How dare you? <laughs> but in the third time, like, she just goes and gambles for some reason. <laughs> yeah. And she... And how does she win? She, she plays roulette. She bets roulette. on 20 all the time. And, like, for whatever reason, like, there's this motif built in. There's a lot of visual elements. There was the color red. There's mm-hmm. the frequency of spider... Of s- spirals. And All right, then, you're coming um, up on time. You're coming up on time. And then they always like have her like screaming to control the situation. She's breaking glass, and then she wins a bunch of money. But then the boyfriend gets his money from this homeless guy back anyway, in in exchange for a gun, and it works out fine. And they're rich. <laughs> and you time, great job, Joel. Was you, that a minute exactly? Uh, you had five seconds to spare, I believe. But um, even with it, taking a break to yell at you, <laughs> even with that break, um. Just a few notes on your uh, on your synopsis, like uh, that intro sequence with the the letters and the people coming together. Uh, they had three hundred extras, and they just did each individual letter, and he composited. This is like early compositing in film, um, as well as like that intro sequence that was like kind of horrorish. I think that was unnecessary, <laughs> but all of, all of the intro sequences were unnecessary. Um, and like, and then like the run. Do you remember that animation? Yeah, like they kept cutting to the animation, and they did like have yeah. this 
So they, she's so she's running downstairs in each run from from her building, and for that run, it, it, there was a safety issue. They didn't want to watch her run, so they cut to the TV of a girl running down the stairs, and she's running down the stairs as this animation, this crazy cracked out uh, animation running down these like spiral staircases, <coughs> and she gets tripped on the second run. What like what's that about? Yeah, she's tripped in the cartoon. But I did feel like the action was so heightened, almost like a Simon Pegg movie. Yeah. That, like, it didn't really detract to have it go to a cartoon to show, like, plot development. Like, there's the formalist elements in this film are so heavy handed. Like, you can't even watch it as, like, a traditional narrative. It is just, like, an experiment in montage and time at a certain level. Right. And it's like, as soon as you realize every decision was like pretty intentional, like, you know, she's running left of frame in her first two runs. And it's just like the the information we learn by the third run, it's like, of course, like her character changes and she's like running more angry. She like jumps over the dog and the guy and barks at them. Yeah, you know, it, it's almost like a, a non winking groundhog day. Like there are so many questions like, does she have knowledge or foresight? Has she lived through it? Mm -hmm. And I thought that was pretty interesting. Yeah, and I the end the end for me was great. Like uh, Manny gets his money back on the third run because, like, for some reason, like just through cause and effect, like he sees the guy on the bike, the homeless man that steals the money from him, or I guess he just finds the money from him because the police take him away. So like he runs into this guy and he just chases him and gets his money back. Yeah, and I think they did a good job building in the randomness and fragility of life. There was kind of like, like they moved, built the whole movie, The Butterfly Effect, about that, like, a device that was just kind of like. I can't wait to watch that. It was a throwaway <laughs> technique in this movie, and it's just like an efficient way to tell the story. Yeah. But you do see how, like, little interactions change people. It's, uh, man. Do you believe in that? Um, not to the degree of like, uh, of like, uh, you know, she bumps into that woman in the carriage and in one scene she becomes like a millionaire and one scene she gets her baby stolen from her and one yep. scene she becomes a Mormon, you know, like, I don't think it's that random where it's just like a, sho a shove, which changes your life. But, you know, to some degree it's like timing matters, you know, like that matters on when you interact with people and that changes who you meet. So to some degree, I guess. I can't wait to watch Butterfly Effect. Did you see the alternate ending where the baby kills itself in the womb with its umbilical cord? It no hangs way. Its, it hangs itself in, in the womb. Does it come out to hang itself? <laughs> no, it's just like a sonogram of it being like, all right, this is the way I take care of this problem. <laughs> I'm just like... I want to. Oh my God. Do you think they're what they put it? Should have put a tiny Brooks was here etched into the vaginal wall. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to do that one. You oh, think we're going to be doing Ashton, this podcast please in five grow years? Up. Please grow up, Ashton, and be tw be have this movie be 20 years old. It, in, in, uh, yeah, five we'll, years, I'm going to be doing this podcast. I'm going to be fucking famous. Dude. Maybe it'll be one of those things where you do it occasionally just for the good ones. Well, I'll be famous for desecrating a corpse and I'll be in prison. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but law, laws have changed, Joel. You're allowed to broadcast from prison to all your fans. I'm going to do Jeff Dunham's act with the corpse of Ronald Reagan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. Uh, let me think of a Jeff Dunham puppet. Um, what Instead is of it? him hating hate terrorists, I'll just hate <laughs> black people. <laughs> Yeah. Um. So give me give me a little quick summary of this film. I it, did the summary two times. No, no you did the uh, everything. Like if you were to do it in one sentence that was out of context earlier off mic, I was like two lovers that ask each other stupid questions and bet. <laughs> how would you how would you like throw somebody off if they hadn't seen this? What if a film editor finally got to do it their way? <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm talking like, about. That is what the movie is like. This is, um, you know, it's it's film editing like got, done really well. And it's a kind of a crossover of a lot of things I really like. There's a big influence by this author, Paul Oster. And it's kind of like the idea of the music of chance. Where like that's kind of like all the little things were. 
So like in between this kind of like easily digestible shell, there's a lot of like fun questions. And I read there was like something like 1500 cuts in this movie. Um, there's a lot of cuts. I it's, think it's frantic. It's really good. And it holds its pace. I did like that. If you go to IMDb and you go to the frequently asked questions, oh, for this I have movie, the tab up. Yeah, go ahead. First question. Did Lord run the run based on a book? No, no. Why didn't Lola use a car? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Lola had a moped, but it was stolen. 20 minutes was not enough time to get a hold of a car and reach the bank. Oh, and did you know that the guy that stole her moped uh, fucking dies in the third run? He gets hit by a car. I didn't realize it, but I was reading that that was the guy that got hit by the car. He gets what's coming to him for stealing her moped in the third round. Oh, that is the moped guy. Yeah. And I did like the like secondary character of the bike thief really just going along. Doing, oh, yeah, yeah. Like every character on the screen except Lola's mother really meant something to the story. Yeah, her like, mother was just a cheater on every, the phone. Everyone on the screen was so fully realized and her mother just asks for shampoo three times. Yeah, and she's cheating. Lola, I need shampoo. Oh, by the way, and she goes back to her phone. She's like, oh, I'm married too. I'm watching cartoons in my TV. Yeah, but everyone's cheating in this movie. It's mm, European, mm. so like you, can, you can't like, that's not fluid. a judgment on the character. Very fluid, like, yeah. I know you're a cheater, so it's not a big deal. Yeah, I can't wait to be featured on Cheaters. Really? That's going to be my credit. <laughs> that would You're be funny. See, like, like Conan, uh, Conan, NBC, uh, Amy Schumer's Trainwreck, Cheaters. <laughs> who, who's from Amy Schumer's Trainwreck? What did John Cena's doing at the bar show? <laughs> they got LeBron. Hell yeah, dude. <laughs> that would be a fun little wink. Um, I feel like that their credit would be like, the you know I uh, what's the school I promise school <laughs> that yeah, would be I LeBron promise. that would be LeBron's credit I promise you're gonna enjoy this next act <laughs> please welcome LeBron James uh, it's just me with a crepe your beard and blackface <laughs> you could just do but you don't need to have the beard that's offensive what yeah I can't grow a beard and like I don't want to see people tack one on okay all right well um. Cool. Um, let's see what else I have here for the notes on. Run, Lola, run. What? Play some of the music. Um, sure. Here we go. Here's the trailer. It's that German shit. Oh, yeah. And, like, there's something about, like, Detasha. the German Detasha. words just kind of, like, go Detasha. into your brain. And they just, like, live there. Detasha. That means the bag, folks. I wonder if this movie is better if uh, if you know German. I made a joke about like I was like, "Am I supposed to be fluent in this, or are the subtitles off?" I went to Germany and I burst my appendix. <laughs> How'd you do that? Um, you know, appendix is just burst. Oh, they do? Yeah. You can't do nothing about it? No, like, yeah, there's no real rhyme or reason to it. Like, it can happen from me even eating Jesus. popcorn kernels. No, no, but my, no, I was, no, I was no, had this no, big no, no. hitchhiking trip planned with my uh, sister. We were going to hitchhike all the way from Berlin to Budapest. Mm -hmm. And it was all planned out. We're leaving the next day. Like over, I wake up that morning Perfect and my timing. stomach had just expanded. I couldn't even button my pants. And I went to the doctor, and the doctor said, Du bist eine Puffsin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. You don't, so you don't trust him naturally. And but du bist eine Puffsin means you just have to fart. Uh, and in my mind, I'm like, you know what? I don't this know. This dude my... says I've got a burst appendix. No, I just had to fart. Mm. And like, I, I wasn't that close with my sister at the time. We're tight now. I've lent her money. Isn't it weird how like gas can feel like a heart attack and then it you can be fart terrible. and then you're like, oh, I'm so glad I didn't go to the hospital. Yeah. And like, I was like, I'm not going to let this ruin my trip. So mm -hmm. I was like, so I went on the hitchhiking trip and I passed out on the side of the highway. And my little sister has to like carry me back to their place. Jesus Christ. And like, I'm, I'm like so <laughs> fucked up. I'm hallucinating out of my mind. Right. And I had burst my appendix. Like poison was just going all through my body. And I was in the hospital in Germany for two weeks. 
Oh and, my god. Yeah, it was Was I that got, expensive? No, I got paid money for it. What? Yeah. I mean, oh, what, 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 what? Do you want to explain to the listeners how that works? Um, I don't know. <laughs> you just I got a check know. for some Deutschmarks? My mom got a check from her for her insurance. What the fuck, dude? That's crazy. Yeah, it's absolutely nuts. Um well, I'm glad you're okay now. And yeah, I just like I'm glad it happened over there. If, if if it happens over here, they just declare you poor and then you pay a, a monthly fee because you went to the doctor once forever. Oh, you do? Yeah, I mean, you know, if it, it's like insurance, you I don't know, medical expenses are expensive in the United States. You got the Skrellies jacking up prices. I'm I'm down with that guy though. He's one of the few people who actually makes the world more interesting. He is funny, but he's definitely an evil person. Who, he's not an evil person. You know, he's like well, he didn't create the late capitalist system. He's just subverting it for artistic merit. <laughs> artistic merit. Honestly, there is something very creative, daring, and it makes a bold statement to raise the price on HIV medication. No, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna give this guy that credit. He's he's definitely interesting, but he's still a douchebag who does not deserve that level. Yeah, of... Yeah, but he also didn't deserve this treatment. Like, I feel like. Oh yeah, he, he yeah. He kind of yeah. got the spotlight on him. Yeah, he... the the. I mean, like, sure. I'm glad what's happening is happening to him, but at the same time, like, he didn't deserve the lynch mob i guess because it's like we should really be holding our government accountable for letting him be able to do that right yeah, it's our government is like enabling the broken system like it's like it, he was like nothing he did was illegal until like was like he did one too many things yeah, and he, like, did of, uh, 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 he did a bit of far. insider trading meanwhile we're locking up we're stealing brown kids from their families and locking them in cages yeah. like Martin? Yeah, to child trafficking, like separating families. But yeah, let's not get it too far into that. But and even the idea of imprisoning someone is on morally ambiguous ground. Like I don't think society has a right to like lock someone in a cage for like a percentage of their time on Earth. I mean, if they did something bad, but like obviously there's been some problems with uh, cr I don't believe criminal reform. But no, you know, nothing a human being can do is like is that bad. slave, that slave prison labor. You know, they're working for like cents. You know, yeah, McDonald's, they need to fix some shit. Amazon. There actually is a, a prison strike right now. There's a working prison strike. I think in 13 states. Um, it's like yeah, it's uh, a huge story that no one's talking about at all. Yeah, and there's also some of them are doing a hunger strike, but it's basic. It all boils down to like, uh, we've got like evil people who are like using prison labor. It's basically uh slavery. So you know, check that out. Um, it's kind of sad, but um, you know, can't really control it. You know. Yeah, I mean, what can you do? If like, I was in prison, I would just relish in all those fan mail letters. You know. This is, oh, dude, we, I once had like a. I would a, be a little prison heartthrob. I did the like. <laughs> you ever go on the prison pen pals website? No. Oh, let's dude, do it's it. the best site on the internet. Oh man, what and, you? So they just match you up with. Uh, no, they have different profiles where you can look them up and write them letters. Oh fuck yeah, dude! Because they're not allowed to have social media. That would be like all the best social media. Yeah. <laughs> you just like get into a Twitter beef with a guy that's killed 50 people. Get a Twitter beef with the warden. Ooh, <laughs> yeah. There should be an uh, there should be like an internal prison Twitter. Absolutely. Just so like uh there's not like I feel like uh, if everyone kind of knew the social structure, they'd be like, oh, you don't want to fuck with that guy. You know, he gets a lot of retweets. You know, he's got a lot of power in here. You know, yo, if you don't if you don't retweet by give your first week, <laughs> somebody's bit. <laughs> yeah. Um, do you want to watch this? Uh, not to take us away from. This prison stuff. Um, I have the the Run Lola Run Simpsons parody. You you have that, or would you rather watch Crank? <laughs> Heavily influenced from. Oh, yeah, movie. yeah. Every, everything was influenced by this no, movie. No, I know. Crank is so garbage, if, though. If you haven't seen this movie, watch it, and you will realize you've already seen it ten times. <laughs> oh, for sure. Oh yeah. You know, no, 
another thing from this movie that I, I feel uh, is underappreciated. It's got... <laughs> so I guess she just almost gets hit by a car, and that's the end yeah, of the parody. <laughs> they just play a little techno music. Um, there's like mm-hmm. another one with Marge I watched earlier. I pulled there up the wrong two, one. The Simpsons did it twice. Find that one. Fucking... Um, here we go. <laughs> I'm telling you, dude. The Simpsons copies itself. Maybe this is the same episode and they did it three times in true Run Lola Run fashion. Ooh, that would actually be kind of funny. I like uh, I like when... like a <laughs> Oh, they did the shampoo. <laughs> yeah. Selma and Patty, her sisters, are like smoking cigarettes. And oh, this is dubbed over with the German, though. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> she just ra- All right, she just ran through the quickie mart uh and Apu had uh maybe 11 children just crawling around on the floor of the convenience store <laughs> like little puppies. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Back when cartoons were good, huh? Yeah, well, I mean, this was a good cartoon. Um So the other thing I wanted to talk about a little bit was uh, I found this article from five years ago. Well, uh, closer to three years ago. But they they found a bunch of one-star reviews of Run, Lola, Run. And they they read them to uh, Franca Potente, who... um, Played Lola. Yeah. So uh, here we go. Here's here's some good ones. Don't waste your money. I heard this movie. I wanted to see it. The movie was terrible. I love Franca Patote. Am I saying that right? Should I not put a weird accent on it? The lead actress. Yeah, I love the lead actress, but this movie is not good. It had a good concept, but it just dragged on and on. Wow, this person sucks. It's like 80 minutes. This movie was less (laughs) runtime than dirty work. That's so crazy. The only movie I can think of with a shorter runtime than Run Lola Run is Master of Disguise. Master of Disguise. That's a. I liked that movie more than I should have. Can I tell you that? Dana yeah. Carvey, <laughs> fucking terrible fucking impression. What do you mean terrible impressions? Dana Carvey's the one I, of the I mean, it's a guilty pleasure. I mean, I it's terribly good. I don't believe in a guilty pleasure. Hmm. So when you masturbate to uh to sports. I'm not gonna say I'm not gonna say what I <laughs> Sport, <masturbate>. sports. <laughs> um, yeah, to uh football players. Uh, all right. So here's the <laughs> here's the end of the uh one star review. Eddie George. Nice. Eddie Gorge. He's, got, he's got great muscles. Yeah, yeah. He got a little peanut head. Just masturbate to Steve McNair. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's a fun. fine tombstone. Let me shoot you with a gun. Because you'll never make me your wife. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, never have a mitri- mistress. Uh, Steve I McNair. Baltimore Ravenous for you, Steve. You watch one scene over and over again. I donated this movie to Goodwill. <laughs> <laughs> what a fucking strong review from Estella Chloe. Um, so here was uh, Franca's response. She's not right or wrong. The film plays a scene a few times with different results. Wow, what a pro. Just That's like, true. So I can feel like it's dragging on if you're not paying attention, if you're hunched over a bowl of chips, or if you go to the bathroom at the wrong moment. Fucking Estella, you fucking over. What do you mean hunched over, over a, a bag, bag of chips? A bag of chips. <laughs> She's did, fucking she learned, digging at her. I did love she learn it. how to eat from the movie Seven? <laughs> You might feel like you're seeing the same movie again and again. I could see that. Man, she she got a, f- a subtle dig in there at her. Hell yeah. And like this is cool because like I don't know, it kind of instills structure and it starts to make sense. It's wonderful. Yeah. Totally. And like really it is kind of it did age a little bit. Like the techn the the cinematography is just not quite sharp enough of as to like modern standards. The animation is a little cloying. There's all these kind of like slice of life scenes that yeah. are like it's it's filmed. Dude, 
It's those, filmed on video. It's filmed on film, thirty-five, and then it's also got like another cells. look. Yeah, it's it's fucking intense. And then av- in between each sequence, there's a very slice of life movie, slice of life scene between uh, Lola and Manny, just yeah. having like relationship mm-hmm. talks. And they develop their it's one shot of them. Mm-hmm. And I like that it didn't build the relationship. It just was, which is really cool. Like you. <laughs> I felt like it did kind of build the relationship. At least it made me feel more connected to why she's feeling this. Uh, but they didn't this establish extreme... anything. It yeah, was exactly. Just there. It, it very much is like a recorded uh, conversation of a real couple. You know what I mean? Yeah. And this is like, it's like, a- what would you do after I die? Was his question to her. He, and she's like, I don't know. What the fuck are you talking about? He's like, you'd forget me. And like, that's, that's, that's like a conversation couples have had. What, what, you know? what would you do if Shelby died? I mean, like, I would feel so sad. I would mourn. Uh, I it would be it would be awful. And then, like, I don't I don't know. Like, I would probably be a broken person for a long time. What do you think? Like, the the answer is, what would you do if uh, the great Gabby Garcia died? Um, I would mourn, and then about twelve hours later, I would start thinking of excuses why I couldn't go to her family's Christmas. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, yeah, you got a man it, with a plan I over here, best folks. If I <laughs> focus on whiskey basketball day <laughs> this year. Uh, I do, uh, I, dude, I just downloaded Bumble for a fucking bit, dude. I'm trying to write. <laughs> it's the <laughs> only thing that's getting me past this tragedy is having Bumble and Tinder. <laughs> um, no, I, I mean, obviously, it's like such a tragedy, but like, you know, like, what do you want to hear in that situation? It's like, of course, you'll be sad. You'll never forget somebody. I would have. I would sleep with your corpse. <laughs> I would. Kill, I would kill myself would like Juliet. Get, would you get in trouble for sleeping with your wife's corpse? You know, in America, probably no, no, <laughs> no. But in one of them fucking countries over in Africa, no way. In, in Thailand, in. In Thailand, in, that's that's how you <laughs> register to vote. In the USSR, probably America's the last free land in I think it's fine. the world. If I died, I would want Gabby to, to sleep with my corpse one last time. Your ashes? To sleep on a beach of your ashes. Oh, yeah. I could have my ashes turn into a vibrator so I could finally give her an orgasm. Nice. <laughs> hey, I have. I've given her like four I want I want my femur put into an acrylic bowling ball, and I want femur is too big. Well, I mean, it would be cut up, and it would be like a limited edition bowling ball. So, like each bone is, and you know, you could get like three hundred <laughs> bowling balls, and you'd be like, "Oh, that's a that's a half femur, <laughs> Matt Anderson." I do have a follow up question. Go ahead. Do you like bowling? No, that's <laughs> the first thing that I thought would immortalize my body. You know. I want kids to fight over my nine pound balls. <laughs> I my my idea is I you know what I think we're all trying to like be immortal in our own ways because we don't know what death will bring. Mm. And I feel like our burial rituals aren't enough. And why is it okay to preserve the corpse of an animal when but not the corpse of a, a man? So I, I'm going to buy an... Taxidermy is what you mean. Well, taxidermy as art. And then I'm going to uh. build an environment where people can walk through... See their family. They'll be preserved in their current form, but they'll also be like adapted into something a little bit more abstract sure. and ethereal. So it's like House of Wax plus uh, Disneyland's uh, <laughs> Hall, Hall of President. Hall of President. <laughs> Yeah, so like, you get them moving around at the supper table. You can walk through. They don't need to move, but I think like okay. you know, like when Hannibal Lecter kills those people in Silence of the Lambs, and like he stages the guards' bodies at the art museum. Ooh, like that could that would be cool see. to see. Like, yeah. oh, who was my grandfather? Oh, yeah. Let's, Let's go, and they could change it every few months. So you'd be like, "Oh, it's down, it's down for the next three weeks while they get ready for the new exhibit of my family." Absolutely, I yeah. mean, I'm ready to make this my life's work. Um, can can't I, wait. Yeah, can I have your corpse? I'll um, use your bones in the bowling alley. Yeah, I'm not. Oh, I'm not. Check the time. Like you want to be done with this <laughs> conversation? Get, can I have your bones or not? Listen, I'm not. I was just about to say I'm not. I'm not donating any. Donating any of my body. Like if you if you look at my license, I'm not a donor. You can't have my eyes. What the fuck? You can't have my kidneys. You can't have my heart. 
Get the fuck away from me. I want to live. Okay? Uh, I'm only donating my neck back pussy and crack. <laughs> hey. Hell yeah, dude. Um, all right. So I got a few more of these Vice article um, one-star reviews. And then uh, we'll do some final thoughts. And we'll wrap it up. So uh, this is a one star titled uh, spoiler, stupid film, unimaginative, badly written with barely one good idea. Basically, this is just a one idea film that would have made a great short feature. Uh, fucking you stupid idiot, Apollo. It was a fucking short, you dumb idiot. Um, instead, they stretched it into a feature film and it is all offensively idiotic. And she just replied to that by laughing and said she loves that i feel like that's like a lesson in learning how to take criticism that sucks yeah i mean that's true and like i did think i thought the scenes between tilly tilly oh. tilly come she's meaner than a junkyard dog tilly. all right so what were you saying um I got distracted. The only the podcast with a hundred percent dog uh, <laughs> drops. Um, taking criticism. Yeah, I love the way she did it. Anyway, um, do you have any final thoughts on the movie? I mean, I think it's great. I think you see shades of Pulp Fiction. You see shades of Amelie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there, there's just so many pieces of like. It, what it this, leads to, it's amazing. Yeah, I mean, this is one of the last films that had a real contribution to like the cinematic language as a whole. I yeah. think it really changed the way directors work, use music, use editing, and it's worth a watch for anyone. It's a, uh, it's such a good fucking movie. I love it. I love that it was basically a passion film that was done right. Like if you built your own company up, you put enough money in. They put in one point seven five million. They made twenty three million. This movie is just like pure art. You know what I mean? It's like un, un like obstructed art, and it's like each decision was amazing there's a fucking bank robbery that you forget about and you're like oh my god and they did such a good job of setting it up for her to get shot at the end of the second run where you're like oh she robbed a bank and it didn't work out but she gets away because they think she's like an innocent bystander you know she gets by they're like get the fuck out of here you know there's a, somebody robbing the bank i loved that twist i it caught me by so much surprise. Yeah, and I, I think it's really wonderful the way they made the universe so small and controllable. And in that aspect, it really just feels so complete. Yeah. Like, it just feel. I felt like you just can't help but feel like you're yeah. in this universe. You get connected to, like, the, the fucking bike thief where you're like, oh, last time he got addicted to heroin and he died. And they, they show that in less than five seconds. It's just this little montage of photographs hitting you of, like, what happens to them. And it's like, it's just crazy and i don't know like the the movie certainly is very good these one star reviews can suck my dick um but it's great yeah give yeah. this a watch tweet us what you think matt yeah. do you have anything to plug um you guys listen to the sit down with mike Racine. um that's it for me and if you haven't um left us a five star review on this podcast yet um go ahead and uh drop one on itunes with a review Everything helps us climb up the charts, you know, and, uh, you know, we appreciate you guys listening and sharing it and stuff. And it's that time of the year, September 7th. We have the live draft for the Big Walkowski at Pine Box Rock Shop yeah, at yeah, 7 yeah. p.m. The following day on September 8th, we have the Big Walkowski. Matt, will you be participating this year? Um, I want to try, but, uh, I feel like there was a schedule conflict. I'm, I'll confirm with you after this. Okay. That's fine. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, September 25th, I'm doing the Dan, Joe and Charles show in Brooklyn, New York. That's going to be a hot one. I hear that show's great right now. And, uh, yeah, I, I have some other stuff that could be very exciting coming soon. We will find out soon. Fucking cool, dude. Yeah. It's exciting. Sleepy. Um, all right, guys. Well, uh, thanks for listening, and bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.